this is a common occurrence. You get up for five minutes and then someone steals your seat and won't move. <laughs> That's okay. We're used to sitting down here in the garden when we're weeding and when we're planting. So we figured we would just pop down here and show you guys what we're planning for fall. So I have been certainly in seed prep uh, stage of the garden. And I find that this happens when you start getting empty spaces, when you start pulling out um, things that have gotten diseases, things that have had pest damage to them, and you just get excited for the things that are to come. So my assistant Rocco and I here have categorized all of our seeds that we have, and we wanted to kind of go through, um, I guess our thought process. Well, maybe not his, he doesn't really care. <laughs> But my husband and I's uh, thought process behind planning our garden for the fall, um, planning our garden for spring of next year, summer of next year, and fall of next year. Uh, typically speaking, seeds can last anywhere from a year um, to upwards of 20 to 100 years if they are stored properly. Uh, personally, I just used this Tupperware container that I had kicking around, um, as you can see. <laughs> by how full it is. I have certainly been collecting and um, what I do too as well, so the construction in the back neighbors are getting some construction done to their house. But what I do is I have little dividers in this container um, that kind of categorizes my seeds that I then have on a paper list here. And well, I have two because I had so many and it kind of categorizes everything. So when I come out into this space, I do know um, what's going on, what gaps I need to fill, uh, and how many new orders of seeds I can make. <laughs> so what I also like to do, um, because this right here is only seed packets that are full or have been partially opened and used, uh, but what I like to do is inside the house, I have a larger uh, Ziploc bag and I just store all of my old seed packets in there and the reason why I like to do that is you'll see in here I don't just buy a tomato I buy different varieties and I like to try different things my husband and I um, were quite into culinary adventures I guess you could say so we like trying out different uh, types that have different purposes to them whether that be a herb or a vegetable um, sometimes too actually we to be honest, been experimenting with um, thinking about edible flowers, thinking about other things that are maybe not too standard in like North American cooking, I guess you could say. <laughs> There's just so much available and uh, well, you can see what we have. I love having this container organized because I'm able to just pick out categories and then kind of go through them and see what I have. Now I could definitely be a lot more organized and I could do a lot more, I guess, storage options um, just because these are kind of haphazardly just folded over. But for this section, as you can probably guess by what's here, is we have a bunch of herbs. So some of these packages, um, well, most of these ones in this handful are from last year, um, or rather this year, but actually no, some are actually even from last year, but I just keep storing them and I like storing them in their package because of course you have all of the information that's on the back from the company. And I like having all of these details just because you wouldn't have to reference the internet. You wouldn't have to do anything specific. You just have all of the things from the company. So in our herb pile, we have some lemon balm. We have some Italian parsley. We have some thyme. We have some oregano. We have two types of dill, and now I'm pretty sure they're the same thing. This one you can kind of see does say fern leaf, um, and we do find that this one produces a lot more of the leaf that you use versus the flower, um, but it was nice to kind of see the difference between those two. We have regular chives, and then we also have garlic chives. So these both have different flavors. Uh, so if you are looking for chives, just keep that in mind because they will produce a different type of taste for you. 
Now I don't have all of the seeds that we have here in this section, I do. Um, but for example, we ordered some more kurabi. We took advantage of MI Gardener's seed sale. Well, twice now, <laughs> just placed another order this morning, but we don't have everything yet in here. So that's why it's also important to make a list because this list here, you can reference um, for all of your items and you can still see I categorize them in different categories flowers on this side. So it's nice to have these references and I often take photos of them. So that way when I'm going through my actual seeds and I might pull something out and say, okay, great. I have all these sprouts. I might think I'm only have four. I might order more. I might think I have enough, but in my reference, I might say that I've already ordered some or that maybe you know, maybe in your past notes, you didn't like certain varieties. So this is also an important reference to make just because we like to put in the different types of, um, I guess, strains and varieties and all that sort of thing. So in this next section here, I hope you guys like these kind of videos. I just wanted to kind of show you what we have and I guess if you can make any recommendations or if you guys love certain varieties, I would love to hear it in the comments below as well. So for Swiss Shard, we have two different kinds. Now, these are two packages that I am excited for going closer into the fall, just because they didn't work for us in the spring. I think I planted them too early and they got a lot of pest damage. So these two we're gonna definitely plant again this year and see what we can get. The bright lights, of course, is super colorful. And then the giant um, Ford hook is just like a plain, plain old Jane. We do also have quite a few varieties of spinach. So spinach right now, definitely a cool weather crop for us. Um, this year has been way too hot and we tried to plant some of this Olympic hybrid and then also the long-standing Bloomsdale does not stand against the heat. So this was something that did bolt on us. Um, we did try to plant a couple of this verdil kind, um, but again, it bolted. Uh, we did also notice a rabbit was in that bed. So spinach, we're gonna try again closer into the fall. We have only one kind of kale and this kale is currently in our beds and it's doing really well because it's nice and shaded from our corn. This is dwarf curled scotch kale. It kind of has a bluish tinge to it. It's really pretty. These two, we didn't plant this year. I just picked these up. Um, these were from Potters in town. I just grabbed them because I hadn't had these in my collection, let's be honest. So this is an arugula. And then this one here is an endive. So I love the texture of this. Um, it's kind of like a, like a lettuce in a sense. And it just tastes really, really great with a balsamic vinaigrette uh, dressing. And like I could eat playfuls of just this with like maybe some goat cheese. Then we have this giant collection of lettuces. So these lettuces here, um, some of them are cool weather. Some of them are starting to pop up now that we're getting into the lower 20s. So we have some butter crunch. We have some ruby. We have some black seeded Simpson. We have, we'll do this one, some romaine. And then we have two types of the tango leaf. Now this one is really, really delicious. It was very, very hardy when we planted in the spring. So we're looking forward to planting a lot more of these. And the great thing is they have like 500 seeds each. These ones are also from MI Gardener. We're really, really loving, loving these seeds. I don't think for lettuces or anything like that, I have anything different coming in does not look like it from our list. That's a great thing about being able to reference. So I did scuff over these sprouts. These sprouts are just like a, going to be a winter activity. They're just ones, um, these two types here that just look like the greenery. They're types you can do like in a mason jar um, or like a sprout jar. Just have a couple different packs, alfalfa and sandwich booster. But then I have these two varieties. These ones here you can kind of see are coated. So these ones you want to plant in soil because you need the soil to break down that coating. Um, so these ones are going to be a winter project when we try to set up some lights just to see what we can, we can test. I'm 
have a drink of coffee in the back. <clears throat> Next up is the onions that we have. Now this kind here is a sweet Spanish Utah. We have a red globe and then we have parade bunching onions. My husband's project for next year is gonna be these onions because we've already pulled the majority of ours in our beds. We do have a small patch that's kicking around, but definitely we want more of those. And I will be ordering some more onions, but I haven't decided what variety we want. We wanna do some experimenting with um, local like farmer's markets and stuff like that and kind of see what everybody has. Next up, we kind of have like a section of like, I guess my gourds and stuff like that. So for zucchini, we did quite like this. It was a good producer, the dark green zucchini, um, but we will be looking for a yellow variety next year just because we want some more color. We also planted some acorn squash. This one was also okay. Um, it's quite small for mine. So mine actually feel like the size of the seed package to be honest with you maybe slightly bigger um and i'm used to acorn squashes maybe just slightly slightly bigger from the grocery store so i'm not sure if i'm on the right track mine also doesn't have this dark green color mine has more of like a pale color still so i think maybe they're just not quite on their way and oh i have one left this one is kind of funny only comes with three seeds because of course it's a giant uh, fair winter pumpkin. I'll show you guys these ones. I think it's interesting. Look how massive the seed is. Crazy. So I have one left. I'm going to try again next year for this guy. One thing I did do this morning for the pumpkins is my husband expressed interest in wanting to do um, some jack-o-lanterns and we didn't really plant any pumpkins or do anything like that. Um, so this year, I just recently, this morning, um, ordered a kind that you can carve for um, pumpkins. It said that it had like a smooth skin and they were fairly round. And the variety that I ordered is called Connecticut Field Pumpkin. So that's going to be one that um, I don't have a seed packet for, but it is something that's going to be on its way to us. So that will be pretty exciting. I don't think I have any more squashes or zucchinis uh, on their way, but as mentioned, we do want to do some of the yellow guys, just because we really like the color yellow. Next up, we have these guys. So I don't think we're going to buy any more uh, brassicas for next year. I personally think I was too impatient on these two seeds. So we have some um, Brussels sprouts here. They're Long Island improved. And then we have the de, um, Seco broccoli. So these two here, I think that I was a little bit impatient and I pulled up the plants a bit too early for them producing. I had a couple friends who a couple weeks after I had pulled up the plants and I had given up on them, they started seeing some signs of life. So I think I was just a bit impatient and I don't have time this year to plant those. So that will be a next year project. This one on the other hand, um, are our cauliflower. Now, I didn't realize this earlier in the season. I thought these were actually the same kind because um, I just saw the snowball. And this one is actually a super snowball and this one is an early snowball. So this kind here was a smaller head, probably about the size of a softball. And I'm really excited about this one. Ooh, we're starting to get cool now. Um, move that up there. So I'm really excited about trying this one uh, next year just to see if we get the larger head formation because we really, really love cauliflower and that's something we would like to keep uh, in our freezer. So although I didn't have the greatest success with my brassicas this year, I think I'm chalking it up to a learning experience because I think I was just impatient and didn't really know what was going on. Now it's a good thing we moved this bucket back because this is a really big section my root vegetables so they're probably all mixed up but we have here just a variety there we go 
of all the root vegetables. Now root vegetables are something that we have a couple in our beds in our gardens, but they're one of those things that they do prefer a cooler temperature. You can plant them in the summer, but there's lots of pests that will eat them, as well as radishes in particular. They'll get a really, really hot heat to them. Um, so you don't necessarily want to do that uh, just because it kind of makes them unbearable. And coming from somebody who likes radish, I don't really like summer radish. So I didn't get any more seeds added, so this is all we have for this kind. But we have some Easter eggs. We have some French breakfast. We have some chariot, some German giants, white icicles. If you haven't tried these, try these. They literally taste like icicles made into a vegetable. I don't know another way to describe it. They're like wet almost, if that makes sense, but they're really, really cool, cool radish. And then of course we have some sparklers. I'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce this beat so if anybody wants to leave that little um, pronunciation thing for this, go for it. But they're really, really delicious striped beet. We have some cylindras, some Detroit reds. Now we haven't um, eaten any of these ones, but we do have some planted and they're doing really, really well in the heat. They're also seeming to be pretty pest resistant. So looking really forward to seeing if we like the root of these, because this might be a seed that we continue to buy over and over because so far we're very happy with the resistance on the leaves, just because we want to be able to eat the leaf. And then we just have some early wonder tall tops. So didn't grab any more, oh, actually we did. We grabbed one, oh no, it was a turnip we grabbed. So no more beets. So for turnip, we have these purple top white globes and then we actually bought some golden ball turnip as well. So they get kind of orangey. So no more beets, just that, or just this one and then the golden ball um, for the turnip. Then for carrots, we haven't purchased any more, but we probably will. We really, really liked these rainbow mix, especially the purple and the kind of like um, more reddish ones. The white ones, we usually always toss and the yellow ones sometimes are questionable, but we like the other ones. So maybe we'll just find a package that are just the kind of darker purple ones. And then we have some tender sweet and these are really delicious because they're kind of thinner um, and they pickle really, really, really nicely. So that's all the root veggies that we have. See what I mean about crazy, crazy seed lady. I just made a funny little reel with the voice of Iggy the Greyhound. Um, and he's like the one who has all the really cool fashion choices. And he's like, is this too much? Is this too much? And I did it with my seeds. I, I laughed, I laughed making it. And that's, that's what you have to have. You have to have fun with this. <laughs> so let's talk about tomatoes. Sorry about the slight change in um, filming. My, my dog was cold, so I had to change where I was sitting so I could hold him. So he stopped shivering like a little leaf. <laughs> so if you see his nose pop in to the screen, um, that's just because he's on my lap. So back to the tomatoes that we have. All of these varieties that are here, well actually, that's a lie. Not all of these varieties, not that one. And then technically that one. So these varieties in my hands we've planted this year. So these black cherry tomatoes, I actually preferred them green. I didn't like when they got as ripe. Um, I preferred them, yeah, I just preferred them when they were green. Sweet million cherries were good, but very, very small. Beef sticks were great and romas were great. We're still getting tons of all of these. We did have a couple other varieties. We planted some tiny Tims. We also planted um, some Candylands uh, and brandy wine as well. Um, and those tomatoes we're not as happy with, so we probably won't be purchasing more seeds of those. Oh, great. We're a double whammy right now. We got some planes going and we have construction going. <laughs> Hope you guys don't mind this. We're definitely going to be looking into some mic options, um, but for now we're just recording with the external audio of my phone. But these two here are new varieties for us. We haven't tried them yet.
but this one is a Tumblr F1 hybrid and this one is a Sun Gold. I'm really, really excited about these because I've heard that these are legitimately Sun Gold. Outside of that, we do have some other varieties that are coming. Um, they're coming from MI Gardener, again, because of his seed sale, we took advantage fully of that. Um, we ordered some yellow plum, some large red cherries, some Kellogg's, some Floridade, and then also some Mariglobe. So we're really excited to try the different um, varieties of tomatoes just because my husband and I really like the culinary side of gardening. So trying different varieties and having their different flavors come through is something that we look really forward to every year. So that really determines what we pick and what varieties that we um, like to plant. Next up we have peppers. So this one here is just a pepper mix. Um, so one thing I can say about these mixes is you can get brought in by the photos, but just keep in mind you don't always get everything in this photo. This is especially true if you have a partial seed pack like me. You may just plant a couple um, and that might not give you uh, all of the varieties that are in the photo. So that's something to be mindful if you're expecting a certain thing. Otherwise, they're just for fun. We have this corner tutorial pepper as well. Now, these ones haven't ripened yet in my garden, but we certainly have some green ones, so I can't really report on them and how great they are, but I'm looking forward to them. They're a very, very tall pepper, so that was very cool to see. Uh, they just kept growing taller and taller in my bed. I also have some California Wonders as well, which are just your standard green pepper. For um, the peppers, we'll definitely order some more peppers, but it's not going to be something that I have right now. Uh, we talked about doing some habanero varieties or some other spicy varieties, but at this point we haven't really seen any seeds that spoke to us. Um, that's something that I'm sure will happen as the season progresses, just because everyone's still getting their peppers this year. Um, and usually for seed saving, they have to be harvested at their maturity and then uh, they're able to be you know, processed and passed on. We do have these though. These are some ground cherries and you know, they kind of look like a tomatillo in the same sense that they have like a husk on them and you eat the inside fruit. Uh, we haven't tried these yet, but it was something just kind of neat and interesting to add to our garden. So we did pick up some of those. Likewise with the tomatoes, cucumbers are, are something that we tried a lot of varieties of and I think that we're going to continue until we find something that we're really happy with. So far it was kind of ironic, the ones that we were most happy with this year we had left over. Um, so those ones are the cucumber straight edge which are your like slicing varieties which are great for salads. We then also had these patio snackers. Now these were great because they were kind of a smaller plant and I found that they were really, really great for snacking and then we also pickled some of them. And then of course we have actual pickling cucumbers because you know, you have to have those for pickling. And then these ones. These ones haven't produced for us this year because I planted them I think a little bit too late and then we had a couple heat waves back to back. Um, but these are Armenian cucumbers. And I've heard that these go upwards of like 12 inches, which is about 30 centimeters. So pretty excited um, to see if those happen next year. You okay, buddy? Got a little burp from the dog. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. So with those, we haven't um, ordered anything different just because we felt we had a lot of seeds and we canned over 20 cans of uh, pickles. So I don't think we'll grow as many cucumbers next year. One thing that we will be growing is going to be corn. Now, we realize that we want to have a garden that um, not only is beautiful and bountiful, but something that also will produce stuff that we can save. So we got two different kinds of corn. We got this early sun glow, and then we also got this peaches and cream bicolor corn as well. Um, we do have two other kinds of corn that are on their way. We have more glass gem corn, which we are also growing this year, uh, just because it was so fun. So we got three packages of that. Uh, and then we also have some Indian corn on its way, just because I wanted something that was a little different um, from the really, really bright pastel colors. I wanted something that was a little bit more muted and earth tones. 
so that pretty much brings us to the end of all of our vegetables. I don't have anything else that is coming. Um, oh, I can't remember if we had mentioned kohlrabi. We might have mentioned it if we did. I'm sorry, if we didn't, we're getting white and purple viennas. Um, so that was something that I don't have in this collection here, um, but something that I uh, definitely did add to the order, which was, you know, something uh, something that we're looking forward to because they were so delicious. They were kind of a mix between like a potato mixed with a cabbage, I guess you could say. I had some really great flavors. But stay tuned if you want to see what's not vegetables. The flowers are definitely something that I am experimenting with. Previously, I just had what you kind of see around me, which was this wild flower garden bed, but I want to be a little bit more specific with my planting for next year. The reason why we want to do that is we want to have a variety of items that we can use as cut flowers. We want to use a variety um, that are edible flowers, and then we want to make sure that we have a lot of varieties that I can use for drying because I have been doing a lot more dried arrangements around our house and I think they're a great decor that lasts a lifetime. So I did bring all of my seed packs over just because it's only a little bit that we have stocked up. I did uh, do an order this morning um, for some white bachelor buttons as well as for some St. John's fire. Um, so those are the only two that I don't have in this pile yet and I do foresee us buying a couple more, especially some varieties that may be already pre-started for the year. So we grew this this year, but I did grab another pack. So this is some ornamental grass seed. I did also get some Lunera. Um, this is a biannual, so we have this planted in our front yard and next year it should do some more seed packets. So we have some amaranth. Um, this is some Joseph's Coat amaranth for, I assume, the multitude of colors that it produces. We have two different types of zinnias. We have our giant cactus mix zinnia, and then we also have our candy cane zinnia. Uh, I have two packages, actually, of this. Now, I tried to plant columbine um, this year, but it didn't work. So I have two more packages so I can hopefully try those next year, because um, this is certainly a flower I love having around. We have two varieties of poppies. Sorry, this one's open on the wrong side. We had a little bit of a spill, uh, but we have some double Shirley's and then we have some Iceland poppies. Now the cool thing actually about these two is um, these ones here, I'll plant next year, but these ones I'll plant this year, but they'll bloom next year. So this Icelandic variety likes to be planted. It likes to overwinter in your garden and then it's gonna pop up for the following year, which I thought was really cool. We of course have some Shasta Daisy, some Portalaca, I think that's how you pronounce this one, but it was a really, really beautiful flower. Two straw flowers, we have some silvery rose and then we have some purple red. I actually had these for this year, but I received them a little bit too late to start them. Um, and that was my fault, no fault of the company at all. Um, but these are gonna be something I hopefully have for next year. And then of course, we have just some lemon queen sunflowers. So that's all of the flowers that we have. Of course, the ones behind me, we'll get these ones coming back every year. Same with these ones that have popped off and a lot of the other um, plants that are in this area here are biannual. So they're gonna keep producing, keep producing uh, for years to come. So we're looking very forward to that and then filling it with some pretty colorful ones um, that are just special. So hopefully you enjoyed the seed starting video, hopefully you look really forward to seeing how everything grows with